Good bloody morning. Welcome back to the channel. I'm pumped because today is day one of paramotor training. And what I'm gonna take you along to see are people who have never touched a glider before and watch them transition into pilots. It's gonna be a fun journey. Um, I'm gonna do my best to sneak a camera in and sneak you guys along because I'll be busy being a little bit more hands-on with them. I'm gonna try to show you as much as I can. Weather's looking great right now. We just need to get started, so let's go. Obviously you can tell I don't have much footage of our training this morning and uh, it's because we were really just in subpar conditions. It wasn't super fantastic. We were at the training hill at the point of the mountain and uh, we were able to make some flights work a little bit. Uh, conditions just were kind of subpar. And then now our afternoon session, this is what it's turned into. Um, it's spring, baby. It's spring in Utah. That's what happens. But what we're going to do is we're going to slam as much training into whatever weather windows we have. We're going to make it work. Um, I'm going to introduce you to Clint and Sarah very soon, and you're going to be able to see their progression. They're pumped. They're hyped. I'm excited. The rest of this week is going to be super, super rad. So let's roll into it. Roll into the future. I hope it looks better than this. It was supposed to be raining right now and it's not. It's 8 a.m. We have a brief window where the weather doesn't look horrible and, uh, and a nice decent breeze out on the north side point of the mountain. So as you can guess, I'm running that way. Clint and Sarah are on their way out there too. And uh, the van's full of all the training gear. So here's what's on the agenda for today. Um, Clint and Sarah had an awesome day yesterday just being able to get introduced to the wing and fly a little bit and get underneath it. And now we still have to do a little bit more introduction to the wing, but we're gonna focus primarily today on kiting, getting that wing above their head and getting control before we introduce the paramotor. So that's what I'm gonna do today. We're going to the mountain, getting them prepped on the kiting aspect of paragliding, and it's gonna be awesome because it's not raining yet, and we're gonna have fun. Also, go ahead, if you haven't yet, like and subscribe, because next week, we're gonna be taking these two uh, students out into the desert and doing some, uh, a little bit more advanced training. The training process is funny because in the very beginning when you start working with someone, you start working with someone, teaching them what the wing's like, it's kind of intimidating for you knowing that in just a few short moments, a couple days, that this person who is has no familiarity with the wing, no idea what they're doing, gonna go up in the air with a spinning lawnmower on their back and you think to yourself how far we have to go how much learning has to happen before you're ready to see that person take off the ground with a or with a paramotor it's intimidating um, having said that though it works and it's it's a wild thing and the light bulb moment for when it clicks for people is kind of all different, but when you see that person click and finally start to get it, it's like, oh, yes. And then that big, nice, fresh breath of comfort sets in and you're like, okay, we can do this. We're gonna be okay. But all the way up until that comes, it's, I'm pulling my hair out. Uh, that's not an indication though of how these two students in this class are doing. They're actually doing really good. And uh, I'm kind of 
kind of cheating because one of them is already a free fall instructor. So he's making my job easy. Ah! There you go. All right, start again. Build that wall. Okay, make that wall nice. Take your time. Okay, now walk towards the wing. Take the power out of it. And go when you're ready. Okay, Miss Sarah. Oh, let's see where you're at. Oh, boy. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous, but you're you're on film for the rest of the students to learn from you. <laughs> Great. I'm a mess right here. So what do we got? What did I do? So you're set up for a left-handed turn, correct? But then we have a riser twist going on right here. Nice, make that wall pretty. Okay. I'm ready. Nice, okay, stay underneath it. Good. Turn around. Okay, heavy in your chest, a little outside break. Right hand, right hand. All right, spin around, abort, abort, abort. It's all right. Good inflation. This wing is just, it's such a tugboat. It just, it almost moves as it comes up. Yeah. Mojito, large, whatever that ends up being. All right, Clint, so your wing, having a hard time staying up, could be a function of two things, right? A little less wind, yeah. um, but also your fabric. How wet is your fabric right now? It's a little moist. People ask, they say, how, like, can I fly in the rain? And like, what happens if I do fly in the rain? Yeah, you can fly in the rain. Um, sometimes you're flying and you're getting snowed on or rained on right. as you're trying to get to your destination. Um, what happens is if that fabric gets, the wetter the fabric gets, the higher the stall speed gets. Yeah. So right now, if the stall speed on this is 14 miles an hour or 12 miles an hour, whatever this wing is based on the weight it's loaded under, rain is going to be like now it's 15 miles an hour right. and it stalls 60 miles an hour. Um, so right now it's wet and it's falling back. So something we can do is go to these trimmers and let's trim this wing out. Let's let these trimmers out. And what this is going to do is that's going to release our rear risers and allow more pressure on the A's. So let's see what that does to the launch characteristic. Nice, good inflation. See that, that wing comes up a little bit more readily. Yeah, a little bit. There yeah, Sarah. There you go, get underneath of it. Pull backwards, pull backwards. Get underneath of it, Sarah, and then spin around. Get underneath the wing. Yeah, there you go. Good, all right, let it, let it just idle for a moment. All right. So when we're ready, everyone stand back. We'll go ahead and just go through a little bit of RPM. Morning, y'all. It is day three of paramotor training. Clint and Sarah are doing so, so well. We've done a pretty good job of dancing around bad weather. And right now we have a window where it's looking pretty good. So today, what our plan is, is we're gonna, we've been working on wing control this whole time. And today is gonna be the first day we introduce the wing and the motor together. We're gonna start with some uh, motor on taxiing, like motor on the back taxiing, getting used to what that motor feels like. And then this afternoon, we're gonna go to powered on taxiing. So big steps in progression today. Um, 
today is a day that like kicks everyone's butt, makes them super sore. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of work, so let's do it. Wish me luck. We're wishing you all the luck. <laughs> Hold your hands out wide. Three, two, one, let's pull. Up, 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 So stand up straight. Good, look at me. Good, keep coming. And a board. Good board, good board. Go. Good. Stay under it. Hold your ground. Don't go downwind. Hold your ground. A little more A's. A little more A's. There you go, keep it up. There you go. And bring it down. Bring it down, bring it down. Hard C's, hard C's. Good, hold, hold, you can fix this. Atta girl, Sarah, good job. Good job. You had your wings sideways, about to fall on your face, you fixed it. Because imagine that you're here, you're alone. You got this big heavy yeah. motor on you, you don't want to have to unhook and fix that. No way. Good job. Jimmy, Jimmy! This is Jimmy. Jimmy, this is Clint, this is Sarah. Jimmy's going through class. Jimmy's going through class in April. Good. Good, walk underneath it, stay underneath it. Less A's, less A's. Congratulations, my dude. All right, y'all. That's the end of day three of training. Everything's loaded up. Look at that. Too much fun in there. But guys, usually in training, I don't have students fly on day three. I usually wait till day four or even day five um, to have students actually go up and solo. With Clint, when you have someone who's ready and they're prepared and and they've done all the steps to get to that point, it's hard for me to hold them back, especially when the conditions are as good as they are right now. Uh, so I pulled the trigger and decided to, to let Clint go up and, and get up in the air and he had a great time. He got two solo flights in tonight that were fairly long. I like their first solo flights to be long because there's a lot of teaching I just am not able to do like that first flight is able to teach them. And so they're able to learn throttle control and, and uh, subtle brake movement, and subtle body position movement and, and all those things. So uh, I'm just so stoked at how well him and Sarah are progressing. Um, so yeah, I couldn't hold him back. Had to let him go do it and uh, he did very, very well. And now he's set up for the rest of the week to, to get a lot more flights in. With Sarah, Sarah is so close. She's right there. She just needs to do get a little bit more confidence with getting that wing up over her head. But uh, too much fun. I love it. I absolutely love helping people get up into the air. It's literally one of my most favorite things to do. Um, just seeing them feel that sense of freedom. Uh, anyway... That's all for now. Um, go ahead and be on the lookout for the next vlog when we finish the rest of the training because we still got two more days of this and then we're gonna go do some fun flights with them afterwards. So 
follow along for that so you don't miss it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Later.